Um, intensity has typically been percentage of 1RM, so the load being lifted, and, and we've challenged that um, a number of times and suggested that actually it's not, that that's not representative of the effort being applied just because it's a heavier load, because it might be a fewer number of repetitions performed at a heavier load. So effort would best be described as the amount of physical uh, or mental energy being given to a task. And in the, con in the construct of you know, high intensity resistance exercise or high intensity training, would say that the idea of training to muscular failure is to the point where um, you are giving maximal effort to lifting a load, but are unable to complete the task. So uh, you know, we published a paper, I think it was towards the end of last year, uh, James Steele was lead author, um, which was clarifying some of the terms, and we talk a lot in that paper about um, muscular failure, um, self-determined repetition max, so that might be the completion of a repetition, but then the perception that you can't complete any more um, without attempting to do so. There was some, some interesting stuff, probably from that paper, if I recall, about <coughs> uh, you know, relatively new exercises are not that accurate at predicting that, that rep max, whereas you get better at it yeah, we've published a few papers around that talking about, we've kind of got into this area of effort and discomfort as well, um, and, and as a construct, you know, looked at uh, whether there's difference in different exercises, whether there's difference in experienced or inexperienced trainees and so forth. And I know that a lot of people still contest, well, is there a need to go to true muscular failure and, and perform that last attempted repetition, or is it sufficient to get within two or three reps? And I know... Um, you know, some of the guys over in Australia, Daniel Hackett and, and maybe Brad might, might sort of argue that. Um, we published a paper with Jürgen a few years back that showed that in advanced trainees, there seemed to be a greater adaptation by going to true muscular failure. Um, I wouldn't discount that there's a threshold somewhere, but where that threshold is might be different between people. And to ensure that we've crossed that threshold to maximal effort, I think it's probably important to train to true muscular failure uh, and, and reach true maximal effort. And, and maximal effort would be um, momentary muscular momentary muscular failure. Yeah, um, yeah, the inability to, to you know lift a load um, despite you know uh, maximal attempt to do so. That's something else you mentioned a little bit earlier, which was the, in terms of hypertrophic benefit we're seeing a little bit more benefit um, to going to yeah. muscular failure. Is that yeah, so I think that, um, you know, the, the study that we, that we did with Jürgen a few years back, um, we saw greater adaptations um, in strength and in, and in uh, measures of body composition that, that included kind of, uh, kind of segmental muscle mass um, or segmental body composition, which, is, which was in this case was a bit of an indicator for muscle mass. Um, you know, for trained people to reach true muscular failure, um, and, and it was even with um, rest pause training. Um, so, you know, I, I would argue that, you know, certainly with advanced trainees, the stimulus might need to be greater, uh, maybe not consistently or maybe not prolonged in the use of advanced techniques, um, but certainly I think that reaching muscular failure is, is the marker um, and, it, and is arguably crosses that threshold. Whereas seeing an obvious reduction in velocity might not, might not tick that box. Again, it's scope for future research and we're really um, uh, kind of crossing the T's and dotting the I's and this kind of thing, but it's interesting.